Hello everyone, my name is Wang Xianyang. Today in this presentation, I want to share you about corporate valuation and takeover wrote by Robert Allen Hughes. In this time, I will share three interesting points in the books. They are how to value a share's strategy for investment acquisition pricing. Let's begin with the part one. How to value a share? Stock price is affected by two respects: instant value of the first and relationship of demand and supply. In long run, stock price determined by the instant value of the first, but in short run, the market demands and supply relationship can cause the price goes up and down. In these times. We look at the instant value price model in long runs. When we evaluate the instant value of the stock, there are two conditions we will face. The first is the first case is that you will have a expense income during the holding periods. Such as dividend. In this case, the current value is equal to the expected cash inflows plus expected future sell price and discount by the required return rate. The second condition is that you had no income in your holding periods. In this case, it's more simple. The current value is equal to the Expect future sell price discount at the expect required return rate, just as the formula show in the bottom of the slide. We continue in the case that you will have expect incomes in the future uh, during your holding periods. We had two price model for the case. The first model is. Single peers, you will sell the stock later. In this case, price value will equal will determine by two parts. The first part is the cash flow discount by retired return rates, and the second part will be the final sell price discount by the required return rates. The second price model is the case that you will hold the stock forever and never show it. In this case, the price varies only based on the future cash flow divided by the required return rate. We had two measures to calculate the present value of the futures inflows. There are also Need to consider two conditions. The first condition is that you can earn a constant profit in the future. In this case, the price is equal is equal to the net dividend divided by the required return rate. The second condition is that when you can get a per permanent growth rate. In your earning, in this case, the price is equal to the dividends you net pays divided by the difference between the required return rates and gross rate. Next, we will discuss the second part, the strategy for the investment. The strategy we talking here is based on. The analysis of stock yields, dividend cover, price earning growth ratio (PEG ratio). The first strategy is based on the stock yields. If the stock yield is lower compared to its competitors, your strategy is sound because it indicates that the company is overvalued. But if the stock's yield is higher than its competitors, your strategy is buy because 
it could signal the stock is undervalued. The next strategy is based on the dividend cover. Dividend covers ratios can calculate by earning per share divided to dividend per share. If the dividend cover is higher compared with its competitors, your strategy is buy because it indicates lower risk. The firm has more current earnings to support his, its current dividends. But if the dividend cover is lower compared with its competitors, your strategy is sell because it means a company has less earnings to support his current dividends. It means higher risk and may cause potential financial crisis. The last strategy is based on the price and earning growth ratio. If you invest in growing companies, you should look at the price earning growth ratio. The price earning growth ratio PG is calculated by divide the PE ratio by the growth ratio. If the PEG ratio is greater than 1, it means the P ratio is greater than growth ratio. In the case, your suggest is shell because the stock is overvalued. But if the PEG ratio is less than 1, it means the P ratio is less than growth ratio. In this case, your suggestion is buy because this means the stock is undervalued. The last part we discussed here is acquisition pricing. It's talking about how to value the asset when a company is under the condition of takeover. In the case of takeover, we can calculate the assets by the following five respects. The first part is fixed tangible assets, such as the plants, buildings, and machine, and so on. The second part will be investment, such as lease shares and securities. The first part will be current assets, such as inventory. The fourth part will be intangible assets, such as patent, brand name, independent experts, though this intangible asset you cannot sell now, but it can bring much more profit in the future for the company. The last part will be a growing concept value. This is the most important because a company in the case of takeover is not closed. It can still running and may continue profit in the future. A growing concept valuation based on a company's net assets may be defined as its net tangible assets, including assets and idle assets, plus intangible assets incorporating goodwill. goodwill. And goodwill can calculate based on a reasonable return on capital. If the return on capital is lower than the intangible asset is value more because the risk is less. Such as the case the return on capital is 15%, the going concept value will be calculated by divide the annual profits by 15% which equals about future 6 years profits. It's a lot of money. So far, we share free interest points in the books. Thank you for patience to listen to me. I'm Wen Yao. Bye-bye.